In this module, we're going to look at regularization and model selection. In particular, we're going to look at uh, subset selection, including the best subset uh, models, the, some stepwise procedures like forward and backward, uh, and then uh, regularization methods uh, such as the ridge regression and the lasso regression. Uh, I will also briefly talk about extensions of uh, um, the lasso regression or, that includes group lasso and elastic nets. Uh, although this is really not part of the contents for this unit, but I think it's interesting just to give you an overview about these um, two extensions. So let's start with best subset selection. And I'm going to use uh, as an example data set, um, a data set that is in one of the packages of R, it's called the FAT data set. And this includes 19 uh, uh, variables related to anthropometrical measurements in 252 males. And the question here is, can we use uh, several of these measurements to predict percentage of body fat? And percentage of body fat is going to be given by the variable Brozac um, that uses, uh, as the name says, the Brozac's equation to, to calculate the percentage of body fat. And we're going to use uh, pretty much uh, all the other uh, variables as predictors for uh, Brozac to the exception of Siri, which also is also another uh, way of computing the percentage of body fat, uh, density, which is used in the calculation of the, the body fat, and also the free fat-free weight, which is a uh, measurement derived from the, the percentage of body fat. Okay, so to the exception of these variables, we're going to use the other ones as predictor of Brozac. So let's consider the following uh, pro uh, modeling problem. I have uh, this, the model y equals to uh, some function of a set of covariates, and I'm willing to assume some functional form uh, uh, for f. Uh, in this case, we're going to assume a linear model. But we have a, a large, potentially large set of, uh, um, of predictors, uh, or potential predictors for, for, for y, and I want to select the best subset of these predictors uh, uh, that predict the, the outcome y. We could frame this, this problem in, um, uh, in a more general uh, sense for generalized linear models, so uh, any model from the generalized linear family, but we're going to focus on linear regression uh, as one particular example in, in this family. Uh, the predictors that I'm considering can also include some transformation of other predictors. For example, we could have some of the predictors being the quadratic term of uh, another variable or some interaction between uh, uh, two or more predictors. Okay. So one possible way of finding the, the best uh, uh, subset of variables that predicts uh, the outcome is to fit all the possible uh, uh, models with that set of predictors. So all the, 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 the models with one predictor, all the models with two predictors, all the models with three predictors, up to uh, the final model with all the, the, the predictors. Okay, And then use some, uh, some uh, statistics, some uh, um, uh, performance statistics to select which one of these, um, these models is the best one. So we could use, for example, the ISC or the BIC or the adjusted R square in the case of linear regression or some cross-validated uh, cross measure. But as you can um, see, it's, it's this method, it's compute, computationally quite intensive because you have to, to fit um, up to two to the power of P models where P stands for the number of, of uh, predictors. So if you have a large uh, initial set of predictors, um, this problem uh, quickly becomes intractable because you have so, you have too many uh, models to fit. So the book describes uh, an algorithm that call, it's called uh, Lips and Bounds, and this was proposed uh, quite a while ago. And it's basically um, um, a speed up, it speed ups the search for the best, uh, uh, the best subset of predictors by discarding some models. So it will not fit all the models, uh, it will, um, um, discard some, some of the models because some theoretical result allows allow us to know that those models will not perform better, but still it's quite computational intensive. Um, in, this, in, in R there's a package called LIPS that, in, that has the REC subsets function that implements this um, algorithm and we're going to use in this first part 
to implement the the uh, the search for the best subset su selection. The, however, the, the reg subset function does not perform cross validation. We might want to add this extra step at the end once once we have a, a, a set of potential best models. So let me show you what what uh, this function does. Uh, so we have uh, the data um, um, fat. Uh, as I said, there's 252 observations. I have here the first six, and the outcome is going to be Brozac, my, my variable Y, and the predictors are going to be uh, all the measurements um, to the exception of serial density and free. Okay, so this is my matrix of the, the predictors. And when I uh, run the, the linear models with the reg subsets uh, uh, function, as I said, uh, this function is going to fit all the possible combinations uh, of these predictors and will give as a result the best model with one predictor, so the best model with two predictors, the best model with three predictors, the best model with four predictors, up to the, the only model with all the predictors. Okay, So you see here, for example, uh, the, the best model with three predictors includes the predictors weight, abdomen, and the wrist. And we could now uh, look uh, across these 14 uh, models, the model with only one predictor, with two predictors, three predictors, and so on, and compute uh, some performance measurements, such as the, the MALO CP. The MALO CP is pretty much uh, identical to the AIC. Um, the R squared, which is not a great statistics because we know that the crude uh, R square, the non cross validated, uh, will can only increase, so uh, it will always going to increase with more uh, predictors. The adjusted R square and the BIC, and depending what what criteria you want to use, you might have a slightly different answer. So with this, the 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 Malos CP statistics or the IC statistics, the uh, the best subset includes eight predictors. This is also similar to the adjusted R square. But for example, if you use the BIC criteria, uh, we'll get uh, a model with only four predictors. Okay, and this is because BIC tends to uh, favor more simple models, where the AIC favors more the, predi the prediction ability of the model. Okay, another possibility is having these fourteen uh, uh, potential best models is to now cross validate. And here I've done a uh, uh, jackknife cross validation, so leave one out. And for models including only one predictor, two predictors, three predictors, four predictors, remember that this is uh, the best model that uh, the direct subset function gave, uh, uh, gave us uh, with one predictor, the best with two predictors, and so on. And I compute the mean square error cross validation for each one of these models, and we can see that the the model with seven predictors is the one that has lower uh, 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 mean square error given by the, the cross validation so i could go now back to the the matrix of the the best uh, the best models and look at the best models with seven predictors and this will uh, will be the model that includes age weight neck abdomen thigh forearm and wrist variables and I could now fit the final model using these seven variables and you have the output, the usual output for linear regression. Okay, so this would be one way of looking for the best model with the, that includes searching pretty much across all the entire, uh, um, all the entire space of, of uh, uh, all the combinations uh, of the, 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 the predictors. Um, but then, uh, as I said, this is highly inefficient and we'll see other methods that try to deal with this problem.